So this presentation is a 15-minute slot, and every time I do it, it takes 18 minutes. So I'm going to speak very quickly. Um, essentially, the key signing that we do here at UK NOF is 10, apparently. Um, the PGP key signing we do here at UK NOF is one of those things that we've done and never really explained, so hopefully this will try and fill in some uh, kind of holes in your knowledge. To start off with, uh, let's just explain what GPG is. Uh, GPG is an implementation of PGP, and it makes things easier. So encryption is difficult. This makes it easier by giving you one single tool that you can use, and uh, uh, it's been around now for about 25 years, so we're looking kind of... Uh, old at it. It was invented by Phil Zimmerman in 1991, and uh, GPG is a tool that uh, we use in part of the key signing. What we're going to do as part of this presentation is show you how to make a key. We're going to show you how to sign a key and what we do here at UKNOF. So, uh, first of all, when you create your key, and I hope loads of people here will create a key, uh, key signing is in half an hour, so you've got just enough time to go and do it. Uh, you'll have a bunch of choices to make. Um, I'm here to tell you, don't be a hero. Don't turn up all the settings to 11. Uh, you will break stuff. So uh, if you are using a, uh, if it asks you for a key size and you'll think, oh, I should use the largest one, yes, it'll make things a bit slower. Don't really care on the encryption side. But if you use, if you turn on the enable large support and you end up with an 8192-bit key, chances are most key servers won't accept you. If you use an elliptic curve key, most key servers won't accept you. Just use the defaults. 2048 is more than enough. If you happen to have one of these, which is a UB key, and you can store your key on that. All the UB keys only support 2048, so if you create a 4096 key today and get it signed, you won't be able to use it on a UB key, unless you've got a very, very new UB key. Uh, also, key expiry. Um, people think that when their key expires, it's useless and you've wasted your time. You can actually change the expiry date. So set it for a year, five years if you want. Try not to set it to never, but try and have an expiry there in case you lose your key. And so somebody knows in five years' time not to use that key again. OK, uh, we're going to go through a few uh, different things. First of all, to make a key, uh, that all adds up, believe it or not, to 20 minutes. Um, if you just want to create a key and come to the key signing, it'll take you four minutes. Just follow the prompts. Uh, everything that is said on there is on a slide, which I'll uh, show you in a minute. minute. Um, the one thing that I will say is if you are creating a new key today, please use GPG version 2.1. Uh, older versions use a different key base format, and uh, you'll have to upgrade your database, which isn't nice. So if you're on a Mac in particular, as I think probably 75% of you are, uh, in Homebrew, you'll get version 2.0 and have a bit of pain later. So try and download 2.1 from the GPG website if you can. You'll need some notes there. We'll come back to them later. Uh, so the next slides are basically, uh, please do it in your own time. I'm not going to talk about them because I've got, not got enough time. But essentially, that's how you create a GPG key and upload it to a smart card if you have a UB key. It's fantastic. And I've posted my configuration for all the tools I'm going to talk about in that uh, GitHub link there. If you have a look at that, you'll be able to get my configuration, which will enable things like SHA-2 uh, uh, hashing rather than SHA-1 or MD5. Um, it is basically just advisable to use that. If you don't trust me, go ask on some mailing list somewhere. UK North mailing list, maybe. So um, when you use your key, um, oops. When you use your key, uh, don't carry it with you. Um, if you keep it on your laptop, and no doubt half the laptop Sorry. Uh, half these laptops in this room probably aren't encrypted, so if you lose your laptop, somebody then can get your private key and pretend to be you on the internet. So just keep it on a machine at home or something, or even better, put it on a UB key. It'd be perfect. And if you see a service like Keybase.io, which is a really nice system, it will ask you to upload your private key, and they promise that they encrypt it locally and they'll submit it. Don't do that. that that's, that's, that's not a smart idea. So, key signing, this is why we're actually here. We're going to uh, talk about what we do when we key sign. So, uh, with the exception of today, because we're going to hopefully have a load of new keys and therefore I haven't done a sheet, I will normally distribute a sheet via the mailing list and on the website. 
and it will be a big long file and you just bring it along and you do verification on it. And the verification will have two tick boxes. It will say ID OK and fingerprint OK. What you're doing is you're checking that the fingerprint is what the person says it is and you're also verifying that the person is who they say they are. So they can't pretend to be Matthew Walster or anybody else. So the three steps are you check their face against their name on their ID, you check their key fingerprint matches their name, and then finally, when you do the signing, you're proving their email address is them by sending them an email with your key, uh, with their signed key, so that they have to upload it. If they can't get access to that email account, why on earth is it in their GPG key? Um, we're going to skip over just a tiny little bit and go to uh, the signing other people's keys. So there is uh, a variety of tools that you can use. Um, one's called CAF, and if you are a masochist who loves uh, Perl on OS X and spending what took me two and a half hours a few days ago trying to get CAF working out of homebrew, don't do it, uh, then uh, feel free to go for CAF. The better one these days is called Pius. I can't remember for the life of me what it's called now, uh, what Pius stands for, but essentially you just type in Pius and a list of key IDs, and it does all the hard work for you. It will submit off all the signatures to email addresses, it will just iterate over the whole lot. Um, so, the whole point of this is that we can then observe trust. So you'll see on here that I want to check this key. And it's from a gentleman called Jonathan Riddell. I don't know if anybody knows him. He's part of the Ubuntu project. Uh, and I can see that uh, he has a number of signatures on it. Uh, the first one is from Martin Meredith. I happen to know him, but we'll just skip over that by Neil McGovern, once again, Debian developer. Andy Davidson, we all know him. Uh, I have signed his key. I can check by checking his key that I have signed it properly. And uh, we can now see that because we've checked those signatures and it's fine, that we can be sure that that person is who they say they are. So, that's speaking very quickly. If you're confused, come along and see what happens. We'll explain it, I'll explain it, it's all good. Now, the one bit that I wanted to get onto, because you're kind of thinking, great, I've signed a bunch of keys, uh, I never encrypt anything, I don't really need to sign anything, I don't make software, I don't do anything that needs GPG verification. Well, there's a nice little thing, which is SSH keys. Everybody here must have five or more SSH keys, which is really annoying to keep maintained, make sure that you log into servers and check the authorized keys lists and whatever. Well, wouldn't it be great if we could use GPG to do this? And uh, you know what? We can. So if you have a GPG key which has a particular bit co set called the authentication bit, you can then export it to an SSH agent, and GPG agent will do this for you. So when you generate a new key, and somebody can run a script on their server to update all the authorized keys lists off the public key server, you can make sure that that key can be logged into everywhere. And uh, it's just really handy. So if you want to give me access to your server, you can just download my GPG key, make sure that it's me because it's signed or whatever, and get that sub key which says authentication. So you can then use that GPG key to log into all your routers and switches and servers and everything. And all you have to do is revoke that key if it ever gets lost, and hopefully it'll just disappear off all the servers. So it's an easy way to manage your SSH keys as well. Um, like I say, you just export your uh, SSH authentication socket, uh, just like you would do with uh, any SSH agent. If you don't use SSH, SSH agent, I would suggest you do. And it spits out a key, as you can see in that bottom line there. You just copy and paste that, put it onto uh, an authorized key file, and boom, you've got access. Um, so the GPG agent also has the benefit that you can add your SSH keys in as well. So if you add in all your old SSH keys, you can use the GPG agent. You don't have to use one or the other. You can just merge them together. Um, the one thing that I'll say when we come into the review is essentially if you are making a GPG key today and you want to get signed and you have no idea what's going on, please come and talk to me. Um, if you happen to have with you one of these YubiKeys, and the YubiKeys are fantastic, I would suggest everybody buys one, uh, especially for 2FA purposes, um, you can use this, plug it in, and type in, I think it's uh, uh, edit key, and you say key to card, it takes your key, it puts it on your card and deletes it from the local system automatically. So as soon as that gets unplugged, it's all gone. 
If I then go to a new computer, I don't have to copy around uh, keys. I can just use this, plug it in, and say, ah, oh, my key's there. And it will sign with it, if you so wish. So as a quick review, we're going to say that uh, Jupyter is very useful. You can sign to prove it's you. You can encrypt, make it private. You can authenticate for the SSH keys. And if you come and do uh, the PGP key signing, you'll improve this web of trust, which means that everybody in this room will then be able to be guaranteed that you're talking to the right people. And that's about it. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Nat. Uh, a bit of a naive question. Can you explain the relationship between this GPG stuff and that hipster Keybase website? Sure. So uh, one of the big things about uh, the whole PGP thing is it's 25 years old and nobody uses it. I mean, the, the distributions use it, and I'll use it to send messages to somebody when I want to prove that it's, it's there. And nobody gives a flying toss about uh, uh, the Web of Trust at all. So Keybase was an initiative set up so that you can automatically prove somebody is who they say they are. So if you, if you trust their GitHub account and they put a GitHub message on it, that it will then get uh, signed and you can prove that that key is who they say they are without having to go and meet them. The big problem with Keybase is that they ask you to upload your private key. So great idea, bad implementation, but it's pretty. Cool, thank you. Cheers. Anybody else? So uh, just to, to finish off, at uh, I think 15 minutes after lunch starts, I will be in the PGP key signing room. If you want help creating a key, if you want to do any key signing, I've got a brand new key from earlier this week. Uh, come along and get it signed. That'd be great. Thank you very much. <laughs>